Well, I'm delighted uh, to be here. 35 years of work here at the Intervale, and uh, I've been visiting the Intervale for 35 years. Uh, a couple of times I came here and did a little gleaning, but it's just very exciting to me to see the progress that's been made uh, in the benefits of the Intervale uh, for our organic food movement, for new Americans who are farming here, uh, uh, for the research that's done here, for the tree saplings, what do you call it? Conservation nursery. Conservation nursery, but those those uh, saplings, is that mm -hmm. what The red oaks are dogwoods. Hundreds of thousands of trees are being started here and then uh, sent around Vermont uh, to help us with climate change, help us with repair and repair. It's really an astonishing gift to Vermont. So I want to thank all who've been involved in the interview and all the partners here. And I really appreciate the opportunity to walk around and see it. Uh, we're here to talk about <coughs> organic agriculture. And just one point that uh, we have to uh, remind ourselves of, it started here. That's a fair statement. We had Senator Leahy, who was the chair then of the uh, Agriculture Committee, and he introduced the first organic act, and that was in 1990. And since then, there's been a continuing, uh, the growing appreciation of the importance of organic agriculture, uh, what it does to uh, keep, keep the, uh, the land uh, in production, uh, how it is so wonderful with respect to carbon reductions, uh, how the practices of organic agriculture uh, are less energy intensive uh, and much not reliant on, on pesticides and herbicides. Uh, and oh, by the way, pretty nutritious and tasty. <laughs> and more and more folks have come to appreciate that. There's a growing market. So the good work of the organic farming community, coupled with an increase in awareness, appreciation, and growing demand in the consumer, uh, uh, for the, the, the consumers, uh, has resulted in just this enormous burgeoning of growth in organic. Uh, I'm on the Agriculture Committee now, and the chair of the subcommittee on rural development, and a big priority for me and in the Agriculture Committee is to continue the progress that Senator Leahy started on organic agriculture and make that stronger, uh, better, and more part of our um, nutritious economy. By the way, nutrition is food, and nutrition is health. Eating good things is really one of the best things we can do to preserve and maintain good health. So I'm here to announce that uh, we are now, have introduced the uh, organic, the, opportun the Opportunities for Organic Act. And that is about addressing the challenges that organic agriculture is experiencing right now. Among other things, uh, the barriers to entry are tough. If you're a farmer you know, doing work conventional and you want to go to organic, there are expenses associated with making that transition. We want to increase uh, the funding that's available to young farmers, or any farmers for that matter, uh, who'd like to make that transition to organic. Uh, second, we want to increase the technical support, which has been absolutely critical. And Vermont has played a big role in this. When a farmer is spending her time, his time, with hands in the dirt, trying to figure out how to get the crops planted, how to get them to grow, they also need a business plan. And that's not their job. They've got to make it happen. But that technical assistance is really something that makes a make or break kind of difference for our young farmers who have so much on their mind that getting that technical assistance, especially in a one-on-one -on -one basis at the time they need it easily, that's really, really, really critical. The third thing that's so important, <coughs> the markets. How do you get the product to market? And that's not something that just an individual farmer can do. It really takes some coordination and, again, some supplemental assistance that is part of what our act would do. So getting that money to help with the transition, getting the technical assistance, and growing the market. These are the three core uh, components of our legislation. We have a number of co-sponsors. Uh, I know that our chair on the Agriculture Committee uh, is very, very supportive, Senator Stabenow. Uh, and I'm just very excited about having the opportunity to work with you, the organic farmers in Vermont, 
and with my colleagues uh, in, uh, the, in, in, in the U.S. Senate uh, to continue making this progress that started back in 1990 with that first act that was introduced and then passed uh, by Patrick Leahy. So, thank you. And I'll stop and now turn it over to Travis of the Intervale Center. Thank you, Senator. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Thanks, Travis. For um, well, first of all, um, I want to thank Senator Welch for coming down to the Intervale Center. Um, and also recall a, a time when the pandemic was just happening and he called me on my cell phone uh, and just checked in. Um, I found that to be a really uh, hopeful sort of moment, you know, early on in, in the pandemic to know that there was somebody, you know, really thinking about how we're doing here as a community in Vermont. Um, I also, I, I wanted to just share that we just had some minutes that we got to sort of tour around the Intervale um, Center and um, visit our conservation nursery and talk a little bit about conservation needs and the climate uh, challenges that we face and water quality in Vermont, um, as well as some of the work we do with our, our partners at the Association of Africans Living in Vermont uh, and how they uh, really sort of um, grow a lot of foods for their, their families um, and themselves and enhance food security. And then talking about you know some of the commercial agricultural activities that we have <coughs> down here in the Intervale. Um, as well as a lot of the work that the Senator was referencing around business development supports that we can provide around the state of Vermont. Um, and I think in relation to this, um, this act, I would say the two areas I would, I would underscore from our um, experiences in Vermont are really on the, the consumer side. Certainly there's a lot of interest in um, getting foods that are, are values-based or enhanced soil. Uh, or take care of the, the planet generally. And so organic certainly does that. Um, and so any ways that we can really enhance the ability for farmers to transition, uh, invest in that direction, and then really grow uh, that kind of food um, for our communities, I think there's demand for that. Um, and I think it's really important. Um, I think on the farm, the farm side, um, you know, we do a lot of business planning with farms, and so it is a, a, a lot of figuring out how financially you sort of put that picture together to be successful. Um, so any number of supports that can come in that help with transition costs very specifically. So I think doubling the sort of size of that investment going towards farms for those, those transition costs, as well as the support services throughout the transition and maybe throughout you know the life of that farm i think having access to business development uh soil enhancement organic transition training generally i think is, is really important and i'll just say that the evidence that we see is that people from around the country are really interested uh whether at nonprofits or uh educational institutions in building that kind of one-on-one -on -one service so we get a lot of calls certainly from around the country uh to, to invest in that so I would just underscore a couple of those elements, um, but really open some time up for Grace, who's got really more of the technical side sort of coming from our great friends at, at NOPA, Vermont. Great. Thank oh. you. Thank you very much. I wrote, I wrote some words here. Oh, good. Grace. <laughs> Forgive me reading them from my phone. Uh, but I, I really just want to say, as the representative of the Northeast Organic Farming Association of Vermont, thank you from our farmer members who are close to 800 and our members who are 1100. This is a really impactful and important program that we are watching and so excited to see be introduced by you, Senator. So thank you. And for continuing the legacy that Senator Leahy had started really investing in organic and seeing the value of organic for our state and our country's future. So we, we feel like this is a, an act that the bill is making clear that organic is the future. And it makes it more possible for farmers to access the opportunities that organic farming provides and provide more support for those who are already committed and doing this work that tends our land and our communities so well. Surveys that we've done from young, beginning, and aspiring farmers overwhelmingly show that they are using organic practices and that they want to be doing better and more and that there are significant barriers that have stood in the way of them certifying and increasing even better agricultural practices. And this bill will help to put certification within reach by increasing cost share reimbursements, by providing opportunities for mentorship and technical assistance, and opening up markets that are really going to long-term support these, these farmers. This bill is good for people. And additionally, 
Transitioning more acres to organic production will make our agricultural system much more ecologically resilient to the impacts of a changing climate. It will protect more pollinators, it will clean water, as Travis was mentioning, and it will really increase biodiversity and resilience in general on farms. Organic practices we know clean water, they heal soil, and they build resilience in this world that really desperately needs that. So working to transition the current agricultural system to an organic one, which this bill does, is not only better for farmers, it not only means the land is better tended, but it also means that our food supply is more secure. As it's more earth connected, it's more likely to keep producing food through the climate shocks that we are seeing and will continue to experience. It will keep our people fed no matter what challenges come. So this bill to me says that ecological and economic success do not have to be at odds. And in fact, that how we farm is really how we care for each other and our planet. An investment in farming is an investment in a thriving future for everyone. So from all of the organic farmers of Vermont, Senator Welch, we just extend our deepest gratitude and excitement to this bill move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. They're doing the hard work. <laughs> all right. Uh, any questions? Yeah, I guess uh, I'll ask in terms of you know getting this bill through, I mean, ultimately, if this bill is passed, how do you measure the success of the kinds of things that the legislation is calling for for areas like the Intervale and other rural parts of the state? Well, two things. One, uh, I think we've got a really good shot at getting this through. You know, there's a farm bill this year, and uh, the farm bill tends to be the most bipartisan uh, legislation in Congress, and uh, we've got a good committee uh, that I think wants to help all of agriculture. So the organic component of agriculture is a significant contributor to the overall agricultural economy. So I have some optimism. Uh, I'll temper that with what's going on with the debt ceiling, uh, because if we collapse on the debt ceiling, then it's bad all around uh, for everybody. Uh, we'll get through that uh, fairly soon. So I, I have some optimism uh, about this. Again, when I served in the Agriculture Committee when I was in, uh, in the House of Representatives and we passed the Farm Bill, it was very hard. There's a lot of competing interest, but there is also a, there's also a reinforced community where most of the members of the Ag Committee come from areas where farming is really important. And it's a different kind of farming, say, in Vermont than it is in Idaho. But the appreciation of the work that our farmers does is bipartisan and that creates a lot of willingness to work together. So I'm hopeful we'll get this done. How do you measure it? It's with like with any other program, you've got to uh, you know kick the tires after uh, the program is done, and you know you you, you, you do an inspection, do an accounting, uh, see where we were, where we are now, and, and try to identify what's working and what isn't. But that's an approach that should apply uh, to this bill, but it should apply to the Pentagon. Accountability. And I guess to follow up, uh, just based on what you saw, you know, throughout the walking tour and your conversations with some of the folks down there, what were some of your takeaways about the work that is being done right here in, in your state? Well, you know, it's tremendous. I, I've been coming to the interview for 35 years, and sometimes it's to be on a tour and see the work that's being done. A lot of times it's been to go jogging or to go skiing in the winter. And to see this community resource and the people of uh, the community, uh, all the citizens, including mostly folks who don't actively farm, but who fully appreciate the importance of farming and the importance of keeping this wonderful resource, the Intervale, available up to the public and environmentally uh, pr protected. I, it's really exciting to me to see it. And the work is continuing uh, and you know, hopefully never stops. Well, thank you. This was great. So appreciate it, Grace. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, oh, really so good. Exciting. Yeah, it is. Yeah.